Hey, hey, Blue Table fans. James and Brett over there looking in the rule book of Free Blades. We're actually going to play a bat rep for you today and uh, kind of show you the ropes in this game. We are going to play a smaller scale game. This is for 100 gold per side. Now, Free Blades uses gold instead of points to uh, get your, your free band size. So I think Brett has three models. I have four. Mine are down on the table. His are over there. And uh, we're about to get started here. We're looking up a few last uh, minute rules and stuff so we can kind of get through this and hopefully make an enjoyable bat rep for you guys. All right, so these are the Black Rose Bandits. I painted these up and assembled them myself. They are on the awesome secret weapon bases, by the way. I did add some foliage and stuff. Starting on the far side over here, this is Black Rose herself. This is the uh, leader of the, fr the uh, free band. Turn her around so you can see her backside there. She's got the awesome scabbard and the sword and uh, reaching out like she's gonna smack somebody across the face. <laughs> Next to her is an outlaw. This guy here has an awesome crossbow. Uh, now the Black Rose Bandits do have the, the best shooting in the game so far, and uh, that's kind of what I've picked here for my, my army list. Next to him is the Rustler. He has a whip, which can be used to entangle your opponent and uh, basically stop them from being able to do anything. And on the far end is the Poacher. He's got his longbow, which is, from what um, Brett and I have played it actually has the longest range out of anybody so far. So they uh, obviously aren't painted up to BTP specs because I just painted them up in a hurry so we could awesomely uh, play a few games with them. So, And I think Brett's got his set, stuff set up over in those. All right, so this is uh, my free band. I am playing the Rodolin Questers. Um, they're kind of medieval knights. And uh, this is my high quester. She's going to be the leader of the group. This guy here is called the Fist of Vidunar. He's kind of the warlock of the group. And then this is an apprentice knight. And um, yeah, relatively simple. Um, I really like the going with the blue and the metallic armor. So yeah, there we go. They're, um, they're beasts and they're tanks. They're awesome. I love it. I've played many games with James with these guys and they're a lot of fun. Over here, this is the DGS Games Dice. Um, Freeblades does use a tiered dice system, um, which means that um, certain weapons use like a D8, others use a D10, some use a D12, um, and then your stats are also based off of these different dice. And then when you're playing in the um, in their like league play, you can actually level up your characters and increase their die levels. So there's everything from a D4 up to D30 and everything in between, literally. <laughs> and then over here we also have the DGS uh, Games token sets, um, which come with wound counters, fate stone markers, power markers, charge and panic, plus uh, loot and objective markers. This is an objective marker, loot marker. Um, so yeah, this is all good stuff. All right, so what we're gonna do here is roll to uh, see who goes first. We're rolling a D12. Uh, we're both rolling D12s, which happens to be the discipline roll uh, for both of our characters. So high player chooses table edge. Five, twelve. Oh, really? Awesome. Which means it's called a spike. Uh, in the game, if you roll a natural, the naturally highest number on the dice, you get to roll again and add that number to your roll. So here I can roll again. I get a ten. So basically, I just ro rolled a twenty-two, which greatly beats his five by a lot. <laughs> but anyways, that actually comes into play more in the game later on. So I'm going to just choose this table edge. Uh, deployment zone is nine inches. And what we do is we start by placing one model individually. So I'll place my high questing knight right there. And now it's on James to place his model. Okay, we're gonna go right there. In that case, we're gonna throw the poacher right there. Okay. Uh, next model, I'm going to do the fist of Vidunar. Okay, and my apprentice knight is going here. And we'll go rustler and black rose herself. Dun, dun, dun. All right, I'm in it. All right, um, so the way the game plays is played in uh, phases. The first thing you have is your uh, magic phase. So I do my magic phase, then James does his magic phase. Then we do movement. I do my movement phase, he does his movement phase, shooting, and then melee. So it's always done like that, back and forth. 
Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is move my character. Um, I don't. I have a guy that can cast magic. Um, he's kind of a short range uh, magic caster, so I'm going to not cast any magic in my magic phase. James is actually not playing with a magic user, so that excludes him from that phase. So I'm going to move straight ahead to the uh, movement phase and move my characters up. Um, each character on the stat sheets have a speed value, um, which is done in inches. And um, so actually all of my guys here have a speed movement of five inches. So I'm just going to head and move, go ahead and move them, and I'm actually going to run them. And so they basically double their movement. And I'm going to run this guy up behind here. I'm going to run her up here. And I'm going to run him up here. And that completes my movement phase. So now it's on to James. Awesome. My movement phase. Now all of my guys actually have movement of seven, except for Black Rose. She's only got a movement of six. So she's kind of moving slow. And that's okay. So we're going to move her up first. Now, obviously, I don't have the heavy armor that he does, so I'm not going to just charge in. You know, that's just not a good thing to do here. Then the... Ooh, I might have to move over here. So we're going to go like that. And he's going to go three and a half inches. Now, that'll actually allow him to be able to move and shoot with what he's got. The poacher has no aim. He's just going to, actually he's going to move up there, and then he's going to move up kind of in front there to hide. Okay, so that's movement. So next we go to shooting. Do you have any ranged attacks? I have no ranged units right now, so I am excluded from this phase. All right, so I guess then I've got two ranged attacks. I've got the outlaw and the poacher. So the outlaw first is going to see if he actually has range there. Now what you do for range, it's kind of it's kind of cool the way it works. The the actual range is only D t or, uh, 10 inches, but you can go out further to, like this, 10 inches is short range, 20 inches is long range, 30 inches is extreme. So, we've got plenty there. I think he's actually in 20. Yes, he is. Okay, so I'm actually gonna roll a D8 for the crossbow. So okay. first, I have to roll the raw D6. So what is your defense? All right, so he's rolling against my defense. The defense on, your, on the Fist of Vigunar mm -hmm. um, is four. So his okay. target number is four to beat. He has to equal or exceed it to beat it. However, because he's out, my normal range, I'm at a minus one, and I move, so I'm at a minus two, so I have to roll a six on the dice. Nope, rolls a three, so he fails. Now, we're going to do, this time you're gonna get some cover here. The poacher, I'm at 19 inches, and the poacher's range is 12, so he's still at that long range, but the poacher, my RAR is a D10. He's a much better shot, but this time he's behind cover, so that's going to be, <laughs> that's actually going to affect the, the armor, if I remember right. So let's go ahead and roll here. We're still at a, D, at a 4, so I do need a 6 for range, and I got a 10, so that's a spike. So 18. Awesome. Definitely. So that's effectively a crit because it's more than 10 of what over the target number. Over the target number, which is awesome. So that gives me a fate token. Yes. And what this does, this will allow me to make a reroll later in the game on him. If I were to beat the number by twice the uh, by 20 or more, then it would actually become a destiny stone, which I can use on anyone. So the fate stone is tied to him. So now I need to do damage. I do have D12 on damage. Okay, and what is your armor? All right, his armor is six. Okay, plus he's gonna have plus one for the being yep. behind cover. So he's actually seven. Target number is seven to hit. 12. Ooh, there we go. So beat it by 10, so I get yeah. another fate stone. Nice. <laughs> or I can turn it in for a destiny stone if I'd like. But right now I'm just going to hold off on that. So I just obliterated him. Um, well, well, he has really, uh, but... two life points. Yeah, so that took one life point. Yes. So he has one wound. Yep. Awesome. So that is my shooting phase. And uh, I am going to trade this in now for a destiny stone. Okay. 
And what does the Destiny Stone do? Destiny Stone lets me do a reroll on any one of my characters instead of being tied just to him. So now this is for my entire party. Alrighty, so that actually ends the shooting phase, and since none of our guys are in melee range, we don't do a melee phase, and yep. it goes back to um, back to initiative magic phase. Yeah. So, um, yeah, let me uh, take a minute to look at my spells, and we'll be right back. So we're rolling for initiative right now. So we're both rolling our d12s. Oh, Eleven. I roll a one. So in tarsh blades, this is called a tarsh when you roll a one. Uh, basically, you fail regardless. So, I failed. Yep. So James is going first. Um, James, do you have any magic attacks? I have no magic, so it is your magic phase, and I believe you're going to do something evil to me. I am going to do something evil, not to you, and I'm actually going to do something good for me. Um, actually, no, I can't, I can't target myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you can. I don't know. It, okay, so I want to... Um, and run this by James. So I can do a thing called Moto's Mending. Mm -hmm. It's a spell where you can recover one life point that was lost. Mm -hmm. Can I target myself? You should be able to. All right. It's just, to just in my caster area, right? Yeah, it's, well, it's nine inches. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to cast that on himself. And um, so basically what I have to do here is um, each uh, magic user has like X amount of um, uh, power points, as it were. Fifteen. Fifteen. And once you use it, it's gone for the game. So you start out at 15, and as you play the game and cast more spells, you slowly lose your, uh, your power. And so it's, it's important to keep track of that throughout the game and make sure that you have enough power, basically, to cast your spells. Um, this guy actually has a special role where, because he's in heavy armor, it actually makes it more difficult for him to cast spells. But he also has another ability that helps him um, cast spells easier if he uses up more power. Uh, so, for example, this Moto's Mending normally costs one power to cast. If I want to make it easier for him to cast, I can make it cost three power, and it'll basically be as if the, his armor wasn't there, negate the armor uh, deficiency there. Um, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to cast it on myself, and... Um, if, and it's important to note, while he's looking that up, the uh, token set that you can get from DGS Games comes with enough power markers for 15 for yeah. your caster. So yeah, you so get everything the, you need for your free power things. All right. So I got, I'm going to use the three, the three power to cast a spell. Um, I use a D12, and the target number is four. So I have to cast over a four in order to effectively cast a spell. So he fails. <laughs> Wasted that spell. That is so unfortunate. All right. All right. This is magic phase, and we're moving on to movement. Yep. Now we're on to movement. <laughs> so this time he's not going to move, so I'm not going to have that negative modifier this time. And he is not going to move. He is not going to move, and she is going to be the only one to move, and she's only moving up right there. <laughs> so that's it. So basically he's trying to keep his guys out of range long enough to get some shots off at me. Brett and right. I have played enough of these games to know that uh, I don't go charging in with my leather <laughs> armor against his, his plate mail. It yeah. doesn't work very well Not for good. me. <laughs> All right. I'm going to be running again. And so here we go. She's running up here. Um, let's see. I think he's going to actually just move right there. He's not going to go very far if he can stay still. And then, let's see, can he run over here? He's still gonna be, all right, he's just gonna run up and take his chances. Hmm. Nice, so that's movement. So now we go to shooting. Shooting. So, and this time he is within 10 inches, so I got no modifiers. Yeah, I'd but, say he's still in concealment though. Yeah, but he's gonna get the cover. And we, we actually did the concealment wrong in the last one. It's not a um, minus one, or plus one to my armor, it's plus one to my defense. Correct. So, yeah, here we go. Yep, so I take my D8, target number is four, plus one is five. Yep. Oh! And he gets a four. Misses again. Hmm. <laughs> no, he doesn't. We're gonna reroll that. And oh! a one, and he wastes his destiny stone. Oh. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> All right, now, now, it's important to note that you can't just shoot through your own models. I was hoping that I could draw a line of sight, but he's like 
perfectly blocked by both of my guys. So I can't draw anything to him. However, we do have her right out in the open. So we're going to check our range here. We're at 11, so we're outside. Or actually, no, we're inside 12 inches. Awesome. And what is her defense? Uh, her defense is five. Okay. I'm rolling a D10. Three. Three. With a whole lot of nothing going on this turn. So that is ranged. All right. And once again, we are not within melee range. Yep. So we're going to roll back and roll initiative again. Five. Five. Three roll. Three. Hey, now. <laughs> that was rude. <laughs> All right. So I got an 11. So it's on me again. And um, let's do some magic here. All right. So I, they have this list of spells. Um, and pretty much all of the uh, magic users have a good variety of spells. They have healing spells, they have buffing spells, they have attack spells. Um, so I am going to... I'm going to do Vidunar's Hammer. It's a missile spell, it's an attack spell. And um, I am going to shoot at his... Oh, sorry. Black Rose. Black Rose. Um, so... Do, 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 do. James, what is your defense? Okay, first you have to try to cast it. Yes, that's right. So, okay, so Vidinar's um, hammer cost one uh, one power, but I'm gonna to, to, sorry do the thing <laughs> where it actually cost me three to make it more accurate for myself. Target number is four on D12. Three! Oh, ah. wow. <laughs> Brutal. Alrighty, not good. Okay, James has no magic, so there's no one to movement. And, let's see. Let's do some moving here. I'm gonna move her. I'm not gonna be in melee range. But I can keep myself out of charge range. Mm -hmm. He is going to run. Like a lot of other games, in order to get a charge off, you do have to have a straight line. You have to be able to draw that straight line without hitting intervening terrain or obstacles. Yes. And he's going to basically come up here. Hmm. Awesome. And if I may point out, I am using my blue table painting uh, tape measure. Yes. Now, both of our tape measures are well used. We have played they, many yeah. games <laughs> with these. So. But they're good. And they're they still, work. still awesome. All right, so it's my movement phase. So now Black Rose here, she, she's going to be in a world of hurt. She's got three characters right there. So we're going to try to run away here. So she's got six, and I know I can kite him. So we're going to go back to here and say, I don't think so. <laughs> okay, now the outlaw is going to do the same, but he's not going to run. He's just going to move back up to three and a half. As long as he only moves half of his distance, he still is able to shoot. Then, and that's actually a special rule with him. It's not for yeah. all right. um, range characters. Right. He's actually got the, I think they call it a reload special rule. Yeah. Like that. So then the poacher is going to move back here. He's only moving seven. So we've got plenty of room. And then he's going to come up and kind of block the ray there, just in case. All right, so I made a mistake. Target number for spells is not four, unless it's a summoning spell. Target number for normal spells is two. So you'll notice that in the last spell that I did, um, attacking James's Black Rose, I rolled a three. Technically, that would have hit. Um, so James has been gracious enough, to, gracious enough to allow me to roll damage for that. Um, so James, off the top of your head, do you know what your uh, defense is? Five. All righty. So first you, have um, to roll, first you have to roll the hit. Yes. So, um, Let's see here. Well, no, that, that is the, the casting yeah. roll, is to roll the hit. I rolled a three on a two, it passes. Mm -hmm. So now rolling damage. So what is your... Yeah, um, is five. No, armor value. Four. Four. All right, so it's, armor value is four. Um, the Viginar's hammer is a D8 damage, so my target number is four. Four or higher attack, or hits. So here we go, D8, four. Mm -hmm. So he takes one wound. Yep, get a wound marker from you. So now I don't feel as bad. Okay, so now that was just a little rewind. Thank you, James, yep. for allowing me to do that. And right, so. now you're on shooting. Yep, now we're on to shooting. 
So the very first thing that's going to happen is he's going to get a crossbow bolt, hopefully right between the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, crossbow, where my D8 go? Okay, so I need a four. But you moved, moved so you're minus one, so you need a five yep. to hit. Nope. Three. Oh, oh rude. Oh, yeah. All right. Then the poacher here, still within 12, so he's good. Same thing there. Longbow is also a, oh, D10. Do, 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 do. So if I had to hit. Seven. Oh, he hits. All right, now we're rolling awesome. damage. So his armor is um, six. Oh, D8. Uh huh. So six steps and kills him. Oh, close. I should have kept that uh, the two face stones on him, and he did that right now. <laughs> oh well. All right. Any more shooting? Nope. That's it. Okay. We do not have melee, so start over. D twelve. Seven and twelve. Oh, keep rolling. Seven. All right. Nice. Hey, where's that face stone? <laughs> Where? Who does that go on though? How does that work? Or do you not get it? For I don't the, think you get it for rolling. Okay. I don't think so either. Yeah, for spiking initiative. Yep. All right. Okay, you have no magic, so it's yep. magic on me. Mm -hmm. And um, so James kind of talked briefly about like the different ranges for shooting. Magic has the same thing. You have a nine inch range and then you have an 18 inch range. So nine inch range is normal. Um, 18 inch is medium and that's how far they can go out. So I'm actually going to attempt to cast um, the Viginar's hammer again, but I'm going to do it on this gentleman here. And uh, so right now I'm going to measure range, mm -hmm. and he's just outside. He's about nine and a half inches. Yep. So I'm at a minus one to mm -hmm. cast the spell, um, which is really unfortunate. And here we go. Um, so you need a, a two. Uh, two. I need to roll a two, um, and I'm sorry. It's going to cost me three. So I'm down to seven power left for the game. Um, here we go. Whoa. Seven. Seven. So it hits, and now I'm doing D8 damage against your armor of... Three. Three. Here we go. T-shirt save. Eight. Ow! So that's a spike, so I get to roll again. Oh. Four. And now he gets a pitch. Um, is that ten over? Yep. I only had the armor No, three. that's twelve. Oh, you're right. You're right. So, no. But still does a wound. How My many wounds does he time. have? He only has one wound. All one right. life point. So... Fortunately, he is removed, but what it says in the rules is that he is removed from the game. He's not dead yet. If you're playing like a league, league game, you actually, at the end of the game, you roll to see what happens to your character. Sometimes they live, sometimes they die, sometimes they're crippled, sometimes, yep. yeah, it's, it's actually really fun. All right, so that ends magic phase. Now on to movement, James. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, did I win or did you win? You won. Oh, okay. All right. I will live with that then. Actually, no, he's... So James's hope really is to keep me out of melee range. Um, yep. You know, and he definitely has the movement and speed to do that. Um, and, because uh, my guys, frankly, are slow. <laughs> yep, so you're going to try to kite him. Yeah, so. it's not good. <laughs> Alright, so my movement, um, he casts a spell, so he cannot run. So he's just going to be able, he just, he can only do his normal movement. Hey guys, wait for me. Uh, five inches. Wow. Right there. Now, this gentleman, I'm going to have to run him over this way. See if I can't try and surround him. James, I'm going to come over to your side of the table. Then. I will allow it. Her, and I'm actually going to run her as well. Straight up here. Mm. Alright. Nice. That completes my movement. Alright. Shooting James, phase? Shooting. We are outside 12 inches, so we're minus one there. We're going to shoot it. All right. My apprentice knight. Okay, has a great sword. Uh, his defense is four. Okay. I need a six. Didn't work. Failed. That's my shooting. Oh. All right. Um, no melee. So okay. we're back to, back to initiative. initiative. Nice. Four. Awesome. All right. Um, first. I am not going to cast a spell on this one, so we're on to okay. movement. Awesome. Movement. Um, 
Get me back. Actually, no. He's not going to move. He is, though. He's going to come over here. So he's not moving his poacher. Is that the poacher? Yeah, the poacher yeah, is not, not moving, moving the poacher so that he can get the... So he doesn't get the minus one penalty to shooting from yep. because of moving. All right. My movement. Once again, we're running. Man, my guys are getting super tired right now. They've been like lugging around all this heavy armor. <laughs> and fatigue, let's see. fatigue. Um, so you can only charge in a straight line, mm -hmm. but you can run in a slightly curved line. Mm -hmm. So I cannot charge, but I think I can get within melee range. So I'm going to do that. Um, and he is going to run. All right, James. Um, All right, so shooting attack. Shooting. Now I could do a shooting attack if I wanted to, but she would get a free strike on me. So now he's got two wounds, and it might actually be beneficial. So I think I'm just going to do that. Okay. Awesome. So. I think you're in range. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you never know. Yeah, you never know. Defense is four. Okay. And he didn't move, so he doesn't have the minus there. Boom. He gets a six. He hits. hits. All right. Armor is six. Okay, so I need a six here. There it is. Okay. Awesome. Killed him. Or, sorry, removed him from the game. Yep. But it was worth it. Now you do get a free strike on me, though. Okay. Um, using the longsword, uh, her mar is d12 plus one. Mama. What is your defense? <laughs> Not good enough. So mar stands for melee attack rating. Um, sorry, five. Yep, so I'm at D12 plus one. I rolled a 10. It hits. Um, damage now is a D8 against your armor value of three. Three. So I have to roll a three or higher. Ooh. Okay. There's a spike. So I get to keep rolling. Mm. Seven. All right. It's 14. Um, and what was your armor value again? Three. Okay. So that actually is uh, 10 over. Mm -hmm. I get a fight stone. I need a wound marker. And you need a wound marker. I do have life, two life points. Okay, awesome. Okay. Um, shooting's done? Yep, shooting's done, so now we actually go over to melee. Melee. Which would go back over here. Now, I actually have the initiative in this case, so I'll be attacking first. In this case, my melee attack rating is a D8. Okay. Uh, her defense is five. All right. Six. Okay, hit. Armor value of six. Okay, and I'm using a short sword, so let's go to D6. So basically in order, yeah, yeah say so in yep. order to, in order to actually do inflict a wound, you'd have to spike it. Yep. All right, my turn. Um, D12 plus one mm -hmm. uh, for my Mar Ouch. against your five defense. <laughs> All right, so an eight, it hits. Yep. D8 against your Armor three. Armor value three. Okay. Here's damage, five. So that drops. He is removed from the table. All right, no one else is in melee range, so it starts over initiative. Yep. Six. One. Okay, James has initiative again. Okay, now my magic mover is moved. User, sorry, <laughs> my magic user was removed, so no more magic phase. Yep. So it goes straight to movement phase. Awesome. James, where are you going? Um, I Ooh. believe... Bum, bum, bum. I believe we're going to charge All right here. So we're going to go straight up there and straight in there. Oh, charging both. Bold move, James. Now, what's interesting is because I have two models in base to base contact with him, he's actually going to effectively reduce his armor. Makes it easier for me to hit him. All right. Okay, so he is engaged. I cannot move him. Yep, but you can move um, over here. But I will have to move my hero, and I'm going to have to run her to kind of join in the fray here. Do, 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 do. Hopefully I'm far enough away that you can't get there. Yes. True. So hopefully but I can drop if his. If I do it right. Okay, right there. Basically it'll allow me to charge on the next turn. Yep. All right, no shooting. So we're going into yep. melee. All right. Awesome. So you, because you charge, you get a plus one bone or a plus one to your attack rating. Yep. On so the bones. first, I'm going to have the rustler attack, 
Now I have a choice. I can either do my whip, which, will, which has a chance of entangling him so he couldn't do a defensive move at all. He wouldn't be able to fight back. Or I could just smack him with a broadsword. My guess is you got two wounds. Uh, yeah. So he's got two wounds here, so my best bet is probably going to be to just out and out hit him. So that's what I'm going to go for. I'm going to go D8 Mar, and he's got a defense of five, I believe it was. Hang on one second. So first, I'm attacking with the broadsword from the rustler. Okay. D8 Mar versus a four. Seven, so that's a hit. All right, I think I'm going to... Hang on one second. I want to use my... Opening up the book. He's looking yeah. for that plus one. I want to use... I'm going to uh, parry your attack. Ooh. Okay, this, this character has a special ability called parry. Um, basically allows me to replace my, uh, use a mar roll to replace my defense. So his defense is four. Mm -hmm. So his mar, excuse me, uh, his mar is d10. So I can roll a d10 and if I get higher than a, f higher than a four. What was your roll? Sorry? Seven. Seven. So I have to get higher than a seven to negate his Six. Nope, ah, not enough. So close. Try the period. That was bad. Okay, anyways, so now we're rolling for damage. Okay, so um, what is your... His armor is six. Okay, my broadsword does d8 damage. Three, so not no enough. damage. Don't, didn't have enough force behind that period to slow it down just enough. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> All right, and now for her. Black now, Rose. Now, this is another interesting thing here. Black Rose, I actually have a d12 plus one, and I can do that for the Mar if I want. Then when I roll damage, I can actually I can split this if I wanted to to two d six plus one each, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. So you're doing two attacks. Two attacks with the long sword. So and we're at a value of four. So that first one hit, and the second one hit as well. Nice. Okay, so that's two hits. Now we do have d eight plus one. Armor value is six. Six. Yep. Miss. Miss. And there, there's, there's a, a wound there. Okay. All right, I got one right here. Yeah. All right. All right, so now it goes over to his turn. Yep. All right, so I am going to, I'm going to attack Black Rose. Um, Mars D10, defense. Defense on her is five. Five, All right, five up. There's a five. However, I have parry two. All right. <laughs> and not just parry also, but parry two. <laughs> yeah, Skill so you two. can do two parries. So I can do two parries. But you can only do one against this attack. Right. So, Or what I could do, and this is probably what I'm going to do, is I'm just going to use my uh, elude ability. Okay. What that means is that effectively with a um, discipline roll, couldn't think of this thing, then I can just step out of combat. All right. And elude the attack. So what is your target number on that? The target number is four, I believe. Okay. So D12, two, uh-oh. So I failed that, so he does hit. Okay, uh, great sword is a D10 plus one. Yep. And your armor is three? Four. Four, all right, so four up. Woo, eight, oh. nine. Takes a wound. Yep, here. so I need another. So I do have three life points on my hero here. It's not looking good for the, the Black Rose Bandits no, it was. He was really hoping to kill my character here and yep. gang up on my, my leader. Um, so an interesting thing here, so that has actually completed um, a, a, a melee combat. And what happens is whoever's the, whoever inflicts the most wounds during a melee combat wins that melee combat. Um, the loser then has to take discipline tests. However, yep. we both got one wound inflicted on each other, yep. so there's no test that needs to be made. So we kind of essentially tied on that. Um, and my leader is no longer, or is not in range, so she cannot do anything here. Yep. So back to initiative round and roll for initiative. And I'm really hoping I can get the initiative Nine. here. Twelve. There we go. Okay. Um, no magic, so it's movement. Yep. And I'm going to charge. I'll just bring you into base kind of that shit. Yep. We'll just call With it there. Black rose. Yep. And you do have your fate point on her. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, no shooting, so we move on to. Uh, melee. Yep. And hopefully I can roll good enough here to kill him. All right. Um, so I will start with her, and she is going to attack Black Rose. All okay. right. Mar, D12 plus one. Yep. Defense is five. Okay. There's a nine. Okay. Hits. Now, um, I'm going to try to do an, an elude on that one. Okay. Try to get out. There we go. So that means that I get out one inch, basically. 
which essentially gets her out of melee. Yep, and she's out of combat, so she won't be able to participate in the combat whatsoever. Yeah, and because of the special rule, basically I do not get the free strike on her. Yep. All right, so then he is going to continue and attack him. Okay. And he is at Mar D10. Defense what is your four. Defense? Four? Nine. Okay. So Nine. Hit. Hits. Um, great sword is D10 plus one. What is your armor? Three. All right. He's got a vest. Okay. <laughs> so hits. That would kill him. Okay. Drop him. And at this point here, it would be uh, prudent for me to do a tactical retreat, and that's exactly what I would do. Because in, if we're playing a league play, I wouldn't want to risk losing my hero and having to start over. So yeah. at this point, I'd be like, good game. <laughs> <laughs> and she's running away to fight another day. So hence the, the need to really kite, and what I should have done, my poacher should have moved back really would have been beneficial because all I would have had to do is move him back an inch and he wouldn't have been able to charge me. That would have made a huge difference, I think, being able to get that extra shot off. Yeah. Killing off the uh, the cleric over here, the Fist of Vidunar, and then be able to continue to kite around over here and take care of that one yeah. by itself. So, a uh, couple notes on free lades. Um, the just individual skirmish games like what we just played are a lot of fun, but where this game really shines is when you start doing the lead games and you start um, keeping track of your character's progressions, and I think it's a lot of fun. In fact, James and I, mainly James, um, created this nice little Excel spreadsheet um, to keep track of, you know, kind of everything that we have on there, so we can basically write in the character, the character, um, all their stats, um, like skills, items, and attributes that they gain. Because um, you can actually pick up things that will like help you as like, you, there's certain um, scenarios where it's like loot grab where you have like eight different loot markers on the table and you just basically go and pick them up and bring them back to your table edge. Um, they can have anything like gold, they can have weapons, items, um, and this is where the game is a lot of fun. And, you gain experience um, every time you play, whether you win or lose. If you win, obviously you gain more experience. But what's cool is, for example, my longsword does a D8 plus one, but if I were to get enough experience, I could upgrade that from a D8 to a D10 plus one, to the D12 plus one, and so on and so forth, all the way up to the D30, and hence the tier dice. Yeah, that's why there's all these dice here, so that really it's, yeah. um, you, you it's, have, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> you have so much, so many things that you can do in this game, it's awesome. It's a super simple game. Obviously, it's really quick. We got it done in not even how long that was. 45 Under minutes. 45 minutes or so, and that was with us kind of having to, to rehash a little thing, a little rules here and there. But uh, I think overall, this is an awesome game. It's super quick. It's simple. It's really low model count. Even if you to play a, a bigger game, if you buy the starter boxes, they're 150 gold each, which is like their standard size game. Um, and even that only has six or seven models, depending on the box set. So. Obviously, feel free to contact us. We'll be more than happy to uh, work with you on making an awesome army for you. Make your, your free band your own. We can do, obviously, the, the standard colors which we have here, or come, come up with something custom for yourself. We can paint them all the way up to level sevens if you like. Uh, Brett's here probably closer to fours. Mine are like two and a half. <laughs> so, um, and uh, yeah, we, we've been enjoying this game. And please, if we've um, if we've done any of the rules wrong, we are still learning. Uh, please correct us. Leave notes in the in the in the comments, and uh, we're always looking to improve our game. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching.